Welcome back to All This Math. This is your host, Professor Parker. And for this lesson, we're going to be converting numbers into scientific notation. We're going to be converting numbers into scientific notation. But before we do that, I want to talk about some of these systems that's on my t-shirt, right? So this is my, this is one of my favorite t-shirts, by the way, right? I just want to put that out there. And I got a lot of different, you know, pro-black, Afrocentric, whatever you want to call it, type t-shirts. You already know if you follow this channel, right? But this is one of my favorites, right? My Black Female Legends t-shirt. So I'm going to just point out some of these people in case you can't see. You might be not be able to see who they are, right? Um, if you're familiar with these people, cool. Still, I recommend you to, you know, study them even more. If you never heard of them before, that's cool too. Go learn about them, right? There are books that have been written about them. There are books that some of these women wrote themselves. Go divulge or go indulge, I should say. I meant to say indulge. Go indulge, right? We got um, Ida B. Wells right here. I got a poster of her on my wall over there. Y'all can't see it, but it's over there. Um, Rosa Parks. I recently just found out that Rosa Parks was involved with the um, Republic of New Africa. That's wild to me. I, so I need to do some more reading on that, right? Um, Asada Shakur. You know, I got the, the same Asada Shakur picture. That's on this t-shirt right here. That's Asada Shakur. Definitely make sure you know about her. We got Angela Davis. We got Harriet Tubman. The ancestor Francis Cress Wilson, author of the ISIS papers. Definitely check her out. Queen Mother Moore, right? Um, putting in work with the reparations movement way back before, you know, people even thought that people was talking about reparations. Um, we got Shirley Chisholm right here. We got Mary McLeod Bethune. We got Sojourner Truth. And last but not least, somebody else who was posted, I got Fannie Lou Hamer. Fannie Lou Hamer. I just did a couple videos when I had my Fannie Lou Hamer t-shirt on. Um, you know, very important civil rights activist. So if you never heard of these sisters, go do your research. If you have heard of them, go do some more research. It's that simple. All right. Now let's talk about scientific notation. Okay. Scientific notation. Now scientific notation is one of those things that kind of gets annoying because it seems difficult, but it's really only difficult if you haven't been taught how to do it, you know, which is kind of the case with a lot of algebra and a lot of math in general. And you'll see scientific notation problems in a, in a chemistry class, a physics class, a biology class. You'll also see it in an algebra class. You'll see it in a pre-algebra class. So I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step method in order for you to know how to always be able to convert any number into scientific notation. First of all, what is scientific notation? It's just another way to write a number. That's all it is. It's another way to write a number. Now, it's valuable because it's a language that is used in, sci in science and in scientific processes, right? It's very helpful and it's very useful, but it's a language. Like mathematics in and of itself is a language. Scientific notation is just another way to express a number, similar to how you might have the metric system or the standard Western system of measurement. Or you might have standard time, which um, goes from um, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m., or you might have military time. Scientific notation is just another way to write numbers, right? And it's used widely in scientific processes and measurements and quantities, all right? So let's look at number one. Number one says three million. So the first thing we got to know is we got to know how to read a number, right? You see all these zeros, you see a three, you see six zeros, that means three million because this is the ones place, tens place, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. That's three million right there, right? First thing you want to do is you want to locate the decimal point. That's your first step. Locate the decimal point. So I look at three million, I say, I don't see no decimal point. I see a comma, I see another comma. I don't see no decimal point. What you want me to do now, right? And I'm, this is what a student would say, right? And that would be that would be valid. If you ever see a number that does not have a decimal point written, just understand that there's an invisible decimal point at the end of the number. So your decimal point is right there, but it doesn't need to be written, right? If we're dealing with a whole number, whole numbers with whole numbers, you don't have to write a decimal point, but just know that it's there. It's there. Even if it, you can't see it, it's in there. It's like Prego. It's in there, right? So your first step is identify where the decimal point is. The second step is, well, let me, let me, let me do it like this. Let me do it like this. Scientific notation. Let me shift gears. Scientific notation is a way to write a number expressed in two parts. The first part is what I like to call the factor. And then you got a multiplication sign. And then you got a 10 with an exponent, right? So we got to figure out what number goes here. And we got to figure out what number goes here. It's always going to have a multiplication sign right there. It's always going to have a 10 right there as your base, but you need to know what your factor is and what your exponent is. Factor and exponent. This is how you figure out what the factor is. First thing about the factor that you got to memorize. The factor can be at least 1, but it can't be greater than 10. So the factor's got to be between 1 and 10. 
Now, the way you get the factor is by doing this, by taking this decimal point and sliding it either to the left or to the right. Now, if you slide it to the right, that's not going to help because that's just going to create a bigger number. Like if I take this decimal point, slide it to the right, my 3 million just turned into 30 million, right? I don't want that, right? I want the number to get smaller. So if I slide it one space, now I got 300,000. Two spaces, 30,000. Three spaces, 3,000. You see what's happening? The number's getting smaller and smaller. But I, those numbers I couldn't use because I need a number that's between one and 10. Between one and 10. Remember that, I need a number between one and 10. So if my decimal point is here, I'm at 3,000. Gotta go smaller. One more time, 300. Gotta go smaller. One more time, 30. I still gotta go smaller. Another time, three. Now I'm cool, three. Three is between one and 10. Three is between one and 10. All right, so three is gonna be my, my factor, right? So I'm gonna just write 3.0. I'm gonna just put a zero after the decimal point. Um, technically, you don't have to, but I just like to do it. I like to have a zero after the decimal point. So that's my 3.0. Now, the second thing we gotta figure out is, what is my exponent gonna be? What is my exponent gonna be? I know my factor, but I don't know my exponent. So check this out. The way you know the exponent is, by, is this way. You go back and you say, okay, well, how many spaces did I move my decimal point? How many spaces did I move my decimal point? And you go back and you say, okay, I know I moved it. started here, right? And I went to the left, right? I went one, two, three, four, five, six. I went six spaces, all right? So I went six spaces. So that's cool. But then there's another detail you need to know. Because sometimes your exponent is going to be positive. Sometimes your exponent is going to be negative. Now, the question is, how do you know which one? Think about it like this. Because this, this is how I do these problems. I always think about how do I get back to the original number? So it's kind of like, how do I get back home? If you think of home as the original number that you started out with, how would I get back home? If I move this decimal point, which started out right here, six spaces over, and now it's here, how would I move it back? I would have to go back to the right. So since I would have to move it back to the right to get back to the original number, the original number, the OG number, right? Ask yourself this, on a number line, in what direction are the numbers that are to the right? Or I should say, what sign are the numbers that are to the right? The positive numbers. Positive numbers are to the right, negative numbers are to the left. So if I had to move to the left to get back to the original number, then that means my exponent would be negative. But whenever I have to move to the right to get back to the original number, that means my exponent is going to be positive. So that means my 6 is going to be positive. So this is going to be 10 to the 6th power. So my final answer in scientific notation is 3.0 times 10 to the 6th power. So 3 million is the same thing as 3.0 times 10 to the 6th power. That should make sense. Why should it make sense? Because how many zeros do 3 million got in it? It's got six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So instead of writing 3 million, and this is why scientific notation is helpful and it's very efficient. This is why we use it. Because instead of writing all these zeros, you can just write 3.0 times 10 to the 6th. Now you might say, well, yeah, I still had to write a whole lot. That's not that different. But what if you had to write like 3 trillion or 3 quadrillion or whatever? Instead of writing all them zeros, you can just use scientific notation. You can write 3.0 times 10, and then your exponent would be the number of zeros that number had. All right? Now, it's not always just going to be like just with a bunch of zeros. Sometimes you'll have non-zero digits, right? And then they would just be part of your factor. Three, It could be 3.18764432, whatever, times 10 to the whatever exponent. But just remember, when you're dealing with scientific notation, you got... You got two values that you need to find, the factor and the exponent, the factor and the exponent, the factor, which is the number that's one or greater and less than 10. And the exponent comes from how many spaces did you have to move the decimal point to create that number that's one or greater and less than 10. So those are the two things. Now let's look at number two. Number two is another example, right? But here we're starting out with a decimal. So the decimal point is written. And remember, the first step is always locate your decimal point. Locate your decimal point, right? So let's set it up, right? Let's set up the scientific notation. So let's say, okay, my factor is my first number. Then I use my X for multiplication. Then I got a 10 and I got an exponent. 
All right. I need to know my factor and my exponent, my factor and my exponent, my factor and my exponent. So this number is, I can't use this number, right? This is not scientific notation because this number is less than one. Remember in scientific notation, your numbers of your fact, your factor or your first number right here is between one and 10. This is less than one. So that means I got to slide the decimal point over to create a number that is between one and 10. Now, if I slide to the left, that's not helping me. I'm going in the wrong direction. That's going to make a smaller number. I don't want a smaller number. I got to get bigger, right? So if I go one space, that's still less than one. Two spaces, that's still less than one. Three spaces, uh, uh, I got 1.25. I'm cool now. I could work with 1.25. I don't, I stop and I stop right there. But what happens if I keep going? If I keep going, that's 12.5. That's no good. That's no good. That's more than 10. Remember, you got to be between one and 10, between one and 10 and not including 10. You could be 9.9999999, but you can't touch 10. You can't be 10. All right? So I use 1.25. Cuz essentially what I did was this. I did 1 2 3, right? Now, I moved 3 spaces, right? To create 1.25. I moved 3 spaces to change this from this number into 1.25. But now I got to think, should my 3 for my exponent, should it be a positive three or should it be a negative three? I got to think about that. Now, what if I, what would I do to get back to the original number? To get back to the original number, I'd have to move my decimal point to the left, right? I'd have to move it to the left because right now it's here. That's how I got 1.25, right? 1.25, 1.25. I moved to the right to get there. And let's say we're going back home. Think of the original number as home. If I'm trying to get back home, which direction do I got to go in? I gotta go to the left. I gotta slide to the left. Now think about a number line. The same number line that you might think of when you add and subtract positive and negative numbers. On a number line, which numbers are to the left? The negative numbers are to the left. Now in your classroom, your algebra classroom or whatever math class you take, your teacher might have a number line on the wall above the dry erase board or above the smart board or whatever you got in your classroom where you can see negative numbers to the left, positive numbers to the right. So if I had to slide to the left to get back to the original number, then that means my exponent is going to be negative. So my exponent is going to be a negative 3. So my answer is 1.25 times 10 to the negative third power. That's what it is. So usually, and you'll, you'll notice this pattern, right? If you started out with a whole number and convert it to scientific notation, like 3 million, your exponent is going to be positive. If you started out with a decimal and convert it to scientific notation, your exponent is going to be negative. All right? So that's just a little bit of practice. Well, a little, just a couple of examples now, but the way you really learn scientific notation is by practicing and doing a bunch of problems where you have to convert the scientific notation. You got to put the work in. That's how you learn it. I showed you how to do it, but you got to do it by yourself to really learn, to really, so it'll really sink in and you'll retain the steps. Because I went through a bunch of steps. You got to first identify the decimal point. Then you got to figure out your factor. You got to know how to do that. You got to figure out what your exponent is. But you got to do these problems over and over and over and over again until you commit that to memory. Just like with muscle memory when you're playing sports. If you're a soccer player, right, you don't think about how you do those different drills and those different routines and different things you do. You have muscle memory. You just know what to do when you see a soccer ball. Your leg just react, right? So, and that goes with any sport, right? So the same thing will apply to mathematics, but you got to practice. You got to put the work in. All right, so you go ahead. Get some practice, and I'll catch up to y'all in the next video. Peace.